Hey, everybody, this is TJR. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. And if not, welcome back. Uh, and also, welcome to part two of my review of the Lifehouse demos from the Who's Next 50th Anniversary Super Deluxe Box Set. In my previous video, I discussed each track on disc two of the set. And in this video, I will discuss each track on disc three. Crazy how that works. And then afterwards, I will have a few final thoughts on the Lifehouse demos as a whole. By the way, this video is probably going to fly by a lot faster than the last video. And the reason for that is because on disc three, there's quite a few repeats of the same song, just alternate versions interspersed throughout disc three's track listing. So let's jump into it here. We're starting with track one and track seven, pure and easy. I can remember the first time I heard this song when it was released off of Odds and Sods. Now, I didn't hear this track until long after I had heard the song is over from Who's Next. And you know, the closing line, there once was a note, pure and easy, playing so free, like a breath rippling by. Hearing that at the end of The Song is Over has always filled me with such a sense of awe and life-affirming joy. It is almost impossible for me to listen to that part of the song and not feel just a tremendous sense of emotion. So to find out that there was actually a whole song based on that one line was very startling. It was not unlike hearing Glass Onion by the Beatles and hearing John Lennon referencing songs like I Am the Walrus and Fool on the Hill. This was, of course, before I even knew about the existence of the Lifehouse Project. So on disc three, we get two versions of this track. The track one version, which is called the Home Studio Mix, is over eight minutes, and it features a fantastic guitar solo from Pete Townsend. The track seven version is the Olympic Studio Mix. It is about only five and a half minutes and was the mix that Townsend created for his solo album, Who Came First. I honestly prefer the longer version that's here on, on track one uh, because I really like Townsend's guitar solo. The Odds and Sods version has the advantage, of course, of Roger Daltrey's vocals. Not that there's anything wrong with Townsend's vocals, and I will discuss his vocals a little bit later on when I give my final thoughts. But there is just something magical about Roger Daltrey singing Townsend lyrics, not to mention the drums and, and bass provided by Keith Moon and John Entwistle. And for this reason, the Odds and Sods version just rocks a little bit more for me. Track two is getting in tune. Now, one aspect of Pete Townsend's demos is just how complete and how releasable so many of them sound. But I have to admit, this one does feel more like it is a demo. The missing key element, of course, in all of this is the loss of Nicky Hopkins' piano performance. But I have to admit, I do love the sound of the Lowry organ on this version. Nikki Hopkins, of course, along with the rest of the band, would help elevate this already great song into the stratosphere. I, of course, prefer the Who's Next version by a mile, but I do like Townsend's guitar on this demo. Track three, Nothing is Everything, parentheses, Let's See Action. I don't believe I have ever heard a version of this particular song recorded by the Who. And this track starts as a, what I describe as a fun, catchy little rocker with some rockabilly influence, definitely, you know, audible when I listen to it. Then, after about a minute or so, Townsend breaks loose with the electric guitar power chords and he pushes the song just a little bit further before shifting into an unexpected acoustic guitar break. The song does find its way back to being the catchy little rocker it started with. And it's too bad that The Who never attempted a version of this one because I can only 
begin to imagine what it might have sounded like. If I could have been in the room at the time, I think I might have told Pete Townsend to concentrate more on the simple rocker aspect of the song and leave the more expansive stuff out if I had you know, been in the producer's chair. Let me know what you think of that. Track four, Won't Get Fooled Again. The now signature organ synth riff that we know from Who's Next is borrowed from this very demo that we get on this uh, deluxe set here, which is why both this version and the Who's Next version are the exact same length. While this demo in no way competes with the final product, I will say this. Any other artist could have released Townsend's demo version. And I think it would have been met with a level of accolade. But the Who takes this very releasable demo and turns it into a track that sounds like it has been delivered to us from the gods of rock and roll right after they ripped the sky open so that we could hear it. The Lifehouse demo version in no way replaces the Who's Next version. But I did find it enjoyable, and I believe I will continue to find it enjoyable on repeat listens. Track five and track nine, Bob O'Reilly. We, of course, got an instrumental demo version on disc two, which I talked about in the last video. That one was over 13 minutes long. This version is just under eight minutes, and it more closely resembles the version we got on Who's Next. There are some differences, of course, besides the fact that, you know, Townsend's doing the vocals. There are some nice instrumental touches that we don't hear in the Who's Next version. We get a slightly longer version with track nine. This version is just an instrumental version of track five, but Townsend describes it as slightly tightened up. None of this, of course, again, replaces the Who's Next version. But it's also very fun and enjoyable to hear, and I will have no problem returning to these versions in the future. Track 6 and 10, the aforementioned, the song is over. Now, track 6 is the 2021 remix, and track 10 is the original mix. In his notes for this edition, Townsend seems to favor his original mix, and I honestly have to agree. Just like track 2, getting in tune, the key missing element is the contribution of Dickie Hopkins on piano. No wonder the Rolling Stones recorded with him so much. And just like the demo version of Getting in Tune, this is one of Townsend's few demos that feels more like a demo. Still, though, there are some interesting audio treats on this version, such as some of Townsend's harmonizing and instrumental choices. These can't replace the Who's Next version, but Townsend's alternate musical choices make listening to this version very fun and well worth the time. And I believe it will be well worth the time on repeat listens also. But yeah, in retrospect, the best thing Pete Townsend did with this particular track is lose the organ as the song's main keyboard instrument and replace it with Nicky Hopkins. Track eight, Mary, original mix. We got an alternate mix of this track on disc two. And in his notes in the book for this edition, Townsend feels this original mix is warmer sounding than the remix that we hear on disc two, which I would later find out was from a previous box set that I never had the pleasure of owning. And I would agree, again, with Townsend on this one. I would also add that this original mix feels a bit more mystical, whereas the alternate mix feels a bit more aggressive. So this brings us to the end of disc three. At this point, I don't think I will be reviewing the rest of the box set as I have way too many other projects that require my attention, although I might come back and review the graphic novel. Let me know what you think of that. Now, I want to give some final thoughts on the Lifehouse demos as a whole. Previously, I had mentioned how complete, intricate, and oftentimes releasable so many of Pete Townsend's demos sound. Now, he was no Keith Moon, but he could play the drums competently. He was no John Entwistle, yet he could certainly hold his own on bass. And while he was no Roger Daltrey either, his vocals were certainly strong enough that if he had, say, never met John Entwistle, Keith Moon, and Roger Daltrey, I still believe that he could have had a successful solo career. 
he might not have been as huge as a solo artist as he was with The Who, but I think he could have had a respectable and notable career on his own. But thank God he did meet them, because as I said earlier, his bandmates, the chemistry between the four of them, could oftentimes, and in most cases, elevate his songs straight into the stratosphere. And in some cases, they could give the impression that they were breaking the sky open so that the gods of rock and roll could deliver them to us. The Lifehouse album never happened and will go down in history as one of the greatest albums never released. But it did give birth to one of the most iconic albums in rock history. It's been a real pleasure finally getting to hear these and finally to get a sense of what the Lifehouse might have sounded like. And I do agree with those who said uh, in the comment section of the last video that Lifehouse could have been a great album. I believe that's probably very true. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. As always, if you like these videos, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon. I want to thank my patron supporters who are, are really helping me to make more videos. And if you'd like to be a patron supporter, please go to patreon.com. And that's uh, patreon.com forward slash TJR the original and become a patron supporter. Patron supporters do receive exclusive weekly videos not available on this channel. Everybody else, if you can't be a patron supporter, I understand. Just click like, and that will help a tremendous amount in helping to grow this channel. I want to thank you all so much uh, for just stopping by and hanging out and spending some time, though, letting me talk to you about music. I really appreciate it. I want to know what you have to say in the comments. Thank you so much, and we'll see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.